that actually played a, a big part on my brain and how I thought. And something so silly, it's mad, right? Because you look back at it, it's so silly. And I was obviously weak-minded at the time, but it had this crazy effect on me. Mm. So the, the whole mental health thing, it, it, was, it was like really low self-esteem, no confidence. If I was in a room, I was sweating. I felt like everybody was looking at me and then what they seen was just this ugly loser. Like I was just, I, I was literally in my head so much and I couldn't get out of it. Hello and welcome to episode five of the Dave Hartree podcast. Today I am joined by Ian Keown and Ian, it's unreal to have you on today. Um, welcome to the show. How are you? Hey Dave, how are you man? All good. Still, good. still recovering over the weekend, but I'm grand. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, it is. What it is a bank holiday feels. I think everyone always has has that uh, for the couple of days after. That's so it. In, obviously, you're doing so well for yourself now. Extremely successful businessman and, and local to Waterford, which is unreal to see. Um, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't go that far now, but yeah, yeah. You're, you're on the way anyway. That's for sure. Getting there. Yeah, getting there. But yeah, as I said, obviously I've only known you since um you op- around the time you opened up the gym and that. So I wanted to start off by just getting an insight into the early years. What was that like for you growing up, especially around Waterford? It's interesting to hear these stories. Uh, growing up, I suppose I'm an only child, came from the Dunmore Road, which would be a pretty quiet area. Um, probably was quiet until I hit about 15. Like me, say 10, 11, 12, 13, everybody would have known me as the quiet guy. I actually met a fella out there a while ago. I was out having a few drinks in, in a nightclub and he says, we, we end up telling stories. And he was like, I remember you. You were that guy that always had his hand up first in the class. Mm. And then out of nowhere, you went bananas. <laughs> so, yeah, I suppose it was quite normal life, your, your average life. And then probably when I was about... 16, 15, maybe got into alcohol, the usual, nothing crazy, you know, going down the field on a Saturday, drinking half an egg and I'm falling all over the ground, but uh, yeah, nothing too mad. And then as I got to about 17, 18, probably went down a really bad road. So your your typical wrong people, um, drug use, drinking, not the average drinking, drinking five, six days a week. And that would have been probably a big struggle for me. Where, I suppose, yeah, where did it come from? I would say a bit of an insecurity started to develop when I was about 17, 18. Really low self-esteem. So that was kind of my escape out of it. Hmm. And it just went from there then, yeah. Yeah, and obviously, like, a lot of people I find kind of growing up in, in small towns like, like Waterford or whatever, you know, it seems to be a, a very common trend with people going down that direction and then once you do go down that way it's very hard to, to pull yourself out and um, yeah i think you know what wait, wait, sorry now for cutting over you dave yeah. um in waterford any kind of a small city it, it's it's so common nowadays that you can be just led down the wrong road and i think at that time it was i suppose the set the sesh life as they call it was kind of kicking off and i got caught up in it right in, in the wrong time wrong people and yeah, yeah, that's it. Like, mm. and how how long did it take before you started to kind of come away from those people and get your life the way it is now? So yeah, like I suppose it wasn't too long, right? I, I wouldn't like let's say I had a, I had a addictive issues, but I wasn't an addict. Like I do believe you're born an addict. Mm-hmm. I feel I was using drink drugs to to escape from reality, which again was like low self-esteem, you know, no confidence. Um, It was about two years. So it was two years, but it was like, it was an intense two years. It was like, if I could have done, if anyone could do anything wrong, I'd done it in two years. Put it down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And like with the addiction and stuff, I'd be very similar. I have a very addictive personality and I went through similar when I was younger, just like, it was mine was kind of when I was in college, just kind of went off the rails a little bit. Yeah. And it can be, it's very hard to, as I said, pull yourself out of that. But one thing you mentioned was like the people you hang around with, I think it has such a huge impact on, you know, all this kind of stuff. And it's I'm sure everything. You, yeah, it's everything. Your circle is everything. It and especially, everything. 
especially in our kind of industry, you know, the it's, oh, it's, it's, it's what I preach every day, man. You know, I preach it to my best mates, my family, my clients. It's like, you know what? The way I would explain it, right? Let's say you have four friends, four good friends. Two are positive, you know, two um, would, would say bring you up. If you have two guys that are negative and they bring you down, what happens? Two bring you up, two bring you down. You go nowhere. That You're just level. So it's very important. You have four guys that you're around every week and they're filling you with positivity. They're telling you, hey, fucking go do this, go do that, or fair play on what you done yesterday. I guarantee you, you will move forward for the rest of your life. Mm. But if you have one miserable fucker in there and every time you meet him, all he has to say is, you should have done that or my life is so bad or, you know, it's just, look, neg- negativity, right? Negativity and just know like, everything is an issue or maybe a bit of bitterness, maybe a bit of jealousy. You, mm. you, you really have to avoid that. Like, And for me, like anything I've ever accomplished in the last couple of years, I put it down to who I hang around. It's like right now, right? I have a girl there, supports me, anything I do. If I told her, listen, I'm fucking putting the Eiffel Tower down on the key here in Watford. She'd say, all right, when, when, when will it be up, you know? Yeah. Same with my mates, same with my family. Like it's obviously down to you at the end of the day if you want to get anything done in life, but definitely it's, it's, a, it's a lot to do with your circle. And, and I really believe in that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of people, they just... I suppose like it fall falls down to this like small town mentality and, and stuff like that of like you just don't know any different. I think when people step out of that and you do meet someone who pushes you forward and is moving forward themselves, you start to realize how powerful that is and how much of a difference it can make. And um, because as you said, I think yeah. once you start moving forward, it becomes very hard to be okay with just staying still. Um now that's I guess, it, 100%. Yeah. And like you were mentioned there about like kind of the people you used to hang around. What would the differences between those bad influences and the people you have around you now? Like, is it something they do? Do they do you rely on them to like kind of I know you're a very motivated person, but like, you know, do you rely on them to kind of get you through the hard times or? Ah, uh, yeah, look, to be honest with you. Like I kind of come like I might come across or a lot of people think I'm this super mentally tough guy that, you know, just nothing ever phases me. But look, that's not really the case. Again, I wouldn't be where I am without the people around me, you know? Mm. Um, Like, look, I suppose if I'm having a bad day, I'm the kind of guy that doesn't really reach out. But my friends are such good friends that they know without me even having to say, hey, look, this is the issue or there's something wrong with me. They'll say, hey, mate, do you want to go for a coffee? Do you want to go for a walk? Do you want to do a gym workout? As opposed to the, the people I used to hang around with before, you know, they're bums. They're, they're ringing it when you're down and they're saying, let's fucking get a bag of cocaine, you know? Mm. Hey, let's get a fucking bottle of vodka or, you know, just literally all the wrong stuff that actually escalates the, the problem and makes mm. it worse, you know? Yeah, and I feel like when you are in a, a loop like that of, you know, when you're feeling down, getting a bag or going on a drink or something, all you're doing is distracting yourself from problems rather than fixing them. And you know, it just that it just keeps getting pushed out. And for some people, it's years, man. Years you're pushing out these yeah. things in your life that you need to address that are just being covered up with going out and partying and, and all that kind of stuff. But um, like, look, I suppose at the end of the day, with, with alcohol, drugs, girls, like they're temporary releases from your problems. Mm. It's what I'm trying to, I suppose, put out there now for again, friends, family, and my clients is. You know, don't turn to bad food, don't turn to alcohol, don't turn to drugs, turn to some positive ways that are actually going to keep your problems away f- forever. You know, mm. go for a walk, yeah. eat good food, um, exercise, you know, get in good shape, build your confidence. Like, they are the right ways to do it, not with yeah. drinking drugs. Yeah, it's very... Um if more people listen to us, I think we'd have a much happier country because you don't really see it until you... Hey, the, the, the pubs will be closed now uh, after this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, no, there'll be no one go out. Honestly, yeah. all the dealer, the dealers will shut down. Dave Hartree podcast will be the talk of the town. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, so look, kind of looking back on, say, where you were at that time, you're obviously, I think, you don't see a lot of these things until you take a step out of the situation and and look back and 
you can kind of then be like, geez, like, how did I not see that? Or what the fuck was going on? Like, looking back, was there, what do you, what were your first steps to pulling yourself out of, out of that hole? Because obviously you didn't go from like, say, session all the time to bodybuilding. Body 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 right. Okay. Bodybuilding, bodybuilding, bodybuilding. Like, look, I, I don't do bodybuilding anymore. Um, I have no interest in it, but I do put it as the, the reason that got what got me out of the hole. Mm-hmm. It was also the one thing that developed my mindset. So, like I was saying to you, I um let me think how I could get into this story. So I started doing a bit of training while I was trying to get out of drinking drugs. I met a guy in the, the Water Weight Training Club, which would be kind of a, a gym here in Water based on bodybuilding, powerlifting. He said, you're in pretty good shape. You know, you should compete. I, I think you, you do well. And at the time, again, low self-esteem, no confidence. I'm like, I could do well. Hmm? Like, I was like, what the fuck is this like? Mm. So he said, look, there's a show on. You could do 12 weeks prep, go into it. And then I went in, right, start, began the prep, doing the food, the training, the cardio. You know all this, Dave. You've been there, done that. Um, and as the weeks were going on, the body was getting better and more and more people started to acknowledge it and say, hey, you look great, man. Mm. You could win this thing. And when that started happening, I realized, OK, so if, if I stop and think about it, if I work really, really hard and give my all to something, I can, you know, be successful. So that's kind of what started. I, like, it, I kind of fell into it by accident, but that's what built the mentality. And I suppose now I use it with everything, you know, whether it's setting up a business, whether it's getting in shape, whether it's setting a new goal. Bodybuilding kind of taught me, okay, so if, if I really, really put my all into it and I try hard, I can almost do anything, you know? Yeah. So that was the way that was the that was the first bit. Like that that was my first step out of it all. It was bodybuilding. Yeah, brilliant. And I think looking like I know a lot of people, and as I said, I'm the same myself. With when you have an addictive personality, I think bodybuilding is very well suited to you. Between, you know, the just how repetitive it is, like the the fucking drug side of it, like everything yeah, is yeah. you know, it's very easy to kind of get hooked on it, you know. Um and that's what happened. That's, that's actually yeah. what happened. Yeah. And like, you just go a completely other way. You see it with a lot of people, you know, I was the same kind of pulled myself out of that session life and it was straight into bodybuilding then pretty much. Yeah. Um, and say the steroid side of it, then looking back on it, what's your opinion on say what you used to do compared to the knowledge you have now? Wait, now who said I was on steroids? <laughs> yeah, no. So I'll tell you what, right. It, it kind of fucked me bodybuilding. So it, like it was like, I learned a lot from it. I got a lot from it and I took it with me. I took all the good stuff from it, mm. but I chose not to take any like the, the bad stuff. Mm. So if it, like, it done me well, but it also fucked me at the time because it was like, right, I'm not taking cocaine. I'm not drinking alcohol, yeah. but I'm now taking steroids. Yeah. So it was like one drug went out the window, but another drug came in with my personality. Look, I'm, I'm an addictive person. That's just me. I'll always be that. And it went into bodybuilding, it went into bodybuilding, and it went into the drug side of it. So I did get kind of hooked on that for maybe another two years. So really, I suppose I was still taking drugs, but I, you could call them a, a positive drug, as in it wasn't as bad. Mm. I don't know, actually, can you say that? Yeah. Censor that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I would have been using it on and off there for like 18 months, two and a half years. I think everybody thinks I, I was um, bodybuilding longer than I was. Mm. But it was really like two and a half years. Yeah, I would have um, thought it was a lot longer than that now, thinking back on everyone, it. Everyone did, man. At the, mm. Do you know what? At the time when I was bodybuilding, there wasn't many actually into it. It wasn't I, as cool as what it is now. So I was just when about I to was, say, like, I think a lot of that is at, at the time, no one else was doing it, and you were Ian the bodybuilder. You know what I mean? And I think that's, that's what it was, yeah. That's what it was in people's heads. Well, like, yeah. When I first was bodybuilding, I was, um, I didn't have Instagram. Like, when I first started, Instagram wasn't even a thing. And I always mm. remember that, like, yeah, and it, it's mad the way it's just so different now and kind of, I feel like if Instagram wasn't a thing, I don't think bodybuilding would even be nearly as, as big as it is now. I think a lot of it is for show oh, on the story. 100%, it is. 100%. Yeah. look, listen, someone actually said it to me a while ago. It was like a, a cheeky comment online and it was like, um, 
Kim here, would you do your workout if you couldn't post it? Mm. And this is someone that trains. I won't say who, but I was like, listen, pal, I'm training since I'm like 12. Before you even knew what a gym was, I was training in my bedroom at home. Do you know what I mean? But obviously, look, now it's a part of my life. It's my business. I like to put out good stuff or good information for others. So yeah, it has to be done. I think you can get into the wrong side of it as well. Then, like, I feel a lot of it is a trend. So people want to look like they're training or they want to be associated with the gym. It's like, oh, yeah, she goes to the gym or she's a gym head. Mm. But with me, I want to go in and like work hard. I want to get something out of it. I don't care mm. if anybody sees me. I don't care if someone says, oh, look, that guy's in the gym or, you know, he's strong, he's in good shape. I really just want to get something out. And that's obviously the feeling you get after training and stuff like that. You know, the buzz. It's all about the buzz, like, getting it. Absolutely, yeah. And I think, like, so back in those bodybuilding days, did you find that had much of an impact on your mental health? Did it have an impact on my mental health? Do you know what? It did in a sense where I was dependent on steroids so i used steroids on and off to get a better physique that then gave me more confidence and kind of solved my issues from the past Mm. but then i got to the stage where i had to keep taking them and i didn't want to keep taking them so like you know yourself you're on steroids you feel great you feel like you can walk through a wall you're stronger you know people are coming and it just fucking goes everything is brilliant like right Mm. so then you obviously have to come off and it's it was when i was coming off that was what played like it played on my mental health because what it was was i was on a high you know i felt really great and next minute my, my my test levels are gone from here to here my mood has dropped. I'm not as strong. I'm not as good. I don't, or I, I believe I don't look as good in the mirror. Now, I would think this, someone else would say, like, you're seeing things, mm. but it's, it, look, it, it is, it's also what comes with it. There's a bit of body dysmorphia comes with the whole sport. Absolutely. And I, I really struggled on my off periods. I felt like this shell of a man. And then, so it was every, I don't know, man. I used to take cyclists for only three or four months. So let's say every, every three or four months, I had to go through eight to 12 weeks of a period where I was depressed. And all you're doing is literally looking at the calendar. You know, you're, ch- you're waiting on the days. You probably felt like that yourself. Like 100%. you're waiting on the days where you can just bump up the dose again and turn back into Terminator. Yeah. So it did affect my mental health. And that's why now I, 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 I'm really big on do it naturally yeah because i can control everything now you know up down is body but up down up down happy sad happy sad now my life it, it just it's linear it just goes like that that's what it's about being a, like you don't need to be too high you, you know you don't need to be too high you just need to be in the middle but hold that there for uh, as much as possible look obviously you can't be happy every day and stuff but if you can be in the middle for the majority of your time on this earth, you know, you're going to have a happier life. Yeah, no, absolutely. Do you ever miss, do you ever miss the bodybuilding days? <clears throat> oh, look, I seen it. I, I was sitting in the bed the other night and I don't know what she was doing. She was washing her hair or something. And I was on YouTube and I ended up going on to the promo video of uh, one of the shows. And I was just looking at it and I watched, I'm just such a comp- competitive fucker. I watched it and I was like, I'm going back. I'm going back. But then I was like, no, no. Like another thing as well, like with the bodybuilding, I was pretty good. Um, well, I, I would say I was somewhere decent. You were. Yeah, you yeah, were. No, I would have been okay. And I, what's the, I was second in, in the nationals two years in a row. So I was close to getting that first place and I mm. really wanted it. And a guy said, says to me backstage, he, he, what are you taking? And I told him what I was taking. And he said, Oh, yeah, hey, yeah, you're one of them lads. Like, that doesn't admit what they take. And I said, No, seriously, like, that, that's all I take. And he mm. goes, Geez, you must have really good genetics. And I said, Look, I, I don't know. Like, I, you know, I'm, I'm just here, like the rest yeah. of you. And he said, would you, Did you take GH or would you take insulin? And I said, um, Hmm, yeah, like, I, I don't know. Yeah, probably. Like, and he goes, All right, give me a call after the show. And we'll organize something. So he, he kind of talked to me about the benefits of it and said that if I wanted to win, I would have to then take these, right? He was basically saying, like, the guys that are beating you probably aren't working harder than you, but 
they're taking more. Hmm. Like it come, I know it. Though, I, it it's genetics. It's hard work, but there's also a side of it that it's who can ever can take or afford more that can take more that has the little bit of the age. So I actually said, look, let's go. And um, I, I put in this massive order and he came back and said, yeah, that'd be three grand. And I just went, what? Oh my God. So I, said, I, tell you what, I said, I'll leave it off, right? <laughs> I'll be back again. <laughs> and then I kind of went home. I took a step back and I said to myself, so it's going to come down to, if I want to win, there's a part in that, that means whoever takes more kind of has a better chance. And that really turned me off. I don't want to play a game of drugs. And then it, it brought me back to my own kind of addictive side. And I said, if I keep getting caught up in this game, I'm going to end up in a really bad situation. Mm. Do you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and unfortunately, like, I think the further into it you get as well, the higher the standard you want to be at, the more you need to push things. Now, I think... Exactly. It's, yeah. It's, it, it, it has changed a little bit. Um since then like since Probably. when you competed like since all this online coaching and you know bodybuilders kind of coming out with youtubes and you know all this kind of stuff there's a lot more education around it now yeah man when i when i first got into bodybuilding like it was old school i was eating steak and eggs for breakfast there was yeah. no such thing as i suppose if it fits your macros i ate steak and eggs for breakfast for 20 weeks straight on that prep and i look back now and i'm like what the fuck was i doing yeah. Do you know what I mean? But with that, like that was the info. Like that's just the trend. It was the way it was back then. Like it was what was going on. Yeah. So transitioning out of bodybuilding, then Ian. Um, how was that? The first couple. Well, like, where did you go when you stopped bodybuilding? What was your mind like at that time? Did you have a plan? Yeah. Do you know what? what? To, to get out of bodybuilding, I had it in the back of my head because of the whole drugs, trying to escape from the whole drugs that thing. Mm. And again, I w- I was out one night. It actually sounds like I'm out the whole time. Anyone watching this, it's every six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> My clients are like, he's telling me not to go out and he's fucking out the whole time. Um, yeah, so I was out and a guy was like, oh, you're, you're big, but I bet you, you can't fucking run. I bet you, you wouldn't run up the top of the road. So then me being me, I went home and I was hung over the next day and I was sitting there with, um, I think it was an ex-girlfriend at the time. And I just was thinking of this guy saying, you're big, but you, you wouldn't run up the road. So I get up, she was on me shorts. She turns around, where are you going? I said, I'm going for a run. She just went, what? A run? Probably never ran, ever, mm. right? So goes, runs, and lo and behold, that guy was right. I couldn't make it up to the top of the road. And that was the turning point for me. It was like, this isn't right, you know and I wasn't even carrying much weight. Mm. You know, I wouldn't have been this massive bodybuilder, but I couldn't run up the road. So I was like, I need to do something. So the first step from there on, I actually joined CrossFit. And mm. I'd done that for about eight months. And that was the, the big transition for me. How did you find that CrossFit after doing bodybuilding? Unreal at the start. Mm. And then got loads of niggles, loads of injuries. And it just fucked me as well. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to come on and bad mouth. Uh, CrossFit, yeah. But for me, it, it, it played a toll on my joints, which could have been down to me bodybuilding and the joints getting it already, and then you know going into CrossFit then just topped it off. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, no. Look, I loved it. It's one of those things where I like I like pushing myself. Like, mm. I if it was cycling, you know, weights, running. If I can push myself, I'll do it. When I went in there, everything was kind of push yourself. So it suited me. It suited me. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, I think with CrossFit, like it, it suits suits some people. I am, I don't know for work experience in, in Warriors. I think I'm going to give it another try when I go to Bali, just just to have a go at it. But it's nice. Yeah, you're kind of training like that now, Dave, are you? Yeah. So my training at the moment is, um, I just do. I have three hypertrophy sessions a week, and then I'd have like three or four nice. Metcon cardio style style sessions. And at the moment, I'm just training for enjoyment, you know. And I think it was a big eye opener for me for a long time that yeah. you know there is more ways than the most optimal to to make progress you know what i mean um, Kibir, t- t- tell me this do you if you were to compare now to bodybuilding do you feel better oh 100 percent oh 100 percent. isn't it mad that even though you're not um 
aesthetically as good, mm. your brain is just that much more clearer. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Isn't yeah. The difference? Even like, even how I talk to people, how I handle clients, how, you know what I mean? I, my relationship with my parents, my relationship with my friend, everything changed, man. Everything changed when I came away from bodybuilding. I feel like it's so easy to kind of put yourself in a little bubble. You know, you're just focusing yeah. on yourself. Everyone else just kind of becomes irrelevant. Or like, I have no yeah. problem looking back and saying it. Like, I had a huge ego when I bodybuilded, it. And I was just like, right, anyone. So did I. Good. So did I. Like, where the fuck does it come out of? Like, that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, and now, like, I'm very humble. Like, I literally have zero ego. Now, maybe a little bit, right? Everyone does. I'm not going to mm. come on and say I have no ego. But it's crazy what bodybuilding or it brings it out in you, like, doesn't it? It's yeah. mad. I don't yeah. know. Like, now, again, that's down to the person. It could have been me around the wrong people at the wrong time. Mm. Like, Absolutely. obviously, yeah, do you know, it, it could have been that. It could have been the guys I was training with. It could have been the bodybuilders I was talking to. Yeah, it might not um, be. It's not bodybuilding itself. No, it's not. No, it's not. Yeah, and as he said, like the people around it, like the best example I can think of with something like this is Connor Brown. Who, like he never really fell into that, you know, the the proper bodybuilding circle, and he's just a normal guy who is still a lovely fella. You know what I mean? Has yeah. time for everyone. So yeah, I think it um, massively has to do with who you're around with. Like if I look back at, I actually words, couldn't get over the the feeling from let's say, I suppose, what would you call it, cardiovascular type training as opposed to just hypertrophy. Mm. Like, I didn't really look into it. I just I just done it. So, like, at the time, I wasn't looking at it, right? Cardio causes the heart rate to go up, and if the heart rate goes up, endorphins are released, blah, 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 blah. I wasn't looking at that. I was just doing it because some fella pissed me off. <laughs> but it was literally four months into it, right? I was like, I'm sleeping better. I have better moves throughout the day, more energy. Like, I was recovering. I was actually recovering better. Mm. It, it was like everything around me just got brighter. And I'm telling you now, I like I swear by it, weightlifting alone is not the way to go. You need to be hybrid. You, mm. Like, if you want to be healthy, you want to have a good life, you, you want to have good relationships with your family, your friends, you want to live long, longevity, you need a mix of weights and cardio. You know yourself, Dave. Look, obviously you agree with me on that one. Like. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And yeah, I think car more cardio than just you know when you're doing a prep, getting up on the stairmaster for twenty minutes. I don't think that's cardio. It's fucking not cardio. No way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. <laughs> now again, as it's time and place, like you know, for bodybuilders, like you know, the people who love doing that and stuff like that, it makes sense. And you know, it made sense to me at the time. Um. And each their own, I suppose, with it. Listen, if if you, if it's you, if it, like what I always say to anybody, right? I, I'd never really fucking knock anyone. Ask yourself, are you truly happy? And if you are, do whatever the fuck you want. Do mm. you know what I mean? That is it. That that's such a weird one to like kind of put down because like when I was bodybuilding, and you know we were just after starting the 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 first coaching business and all that, and and that was taken off like. I felt unreal. I thought I was happy for a long time. And yeah, it, it took me about a year of being miserable to kind of realize, hang on, I'm, I'm actually not happy doing this anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's tough going now. That is tough going. Yeah. Um, I, I clicked. I actually didn't go through that. I actually clicked instantly. So yeah. Now obviously, like I always kind of say this, like my circumstances were extremely rare in, in, in all this same kind of my view on bodybuilding. Like I know it's very easy yeah. to kind of look and say, Oh sure. Obviously he thinks that and whatever, but yeah, it's just even from like talking to people like yourself, it's not just one person thinking this, you know, it's kind of everyone. And you don't really have these conversations with people when you're a bodybuilder, because you're just talking to other bodybuilders. You know what I mean? You're in a, you're in a tunnel. You're in yeah. a tunnel. Yeah. Yeah. You're, literally, you're literally in a tunnel and it's all that's in the tunnel is bodybuilding. Yeah, you don't know what the fuck is going on around you, you know. Yeah, and some people love that. Like I know some people who are just like they are bodybuilders. Do you know what I mean? Like they're built for yeah. it. But even looking back on it, like I wasn't one of those people, and I thought I was, and I convinced myself I was because same, you know, same, that, yeah, that, I was that's what was looking good on Instagram, and you know what I mean. Yeah. That was like, it was making me inflating my ego. You know what I mean? Being the biggest lad walking around, and yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, it just wasn't wasn't the right reasons to get into it. Um, I think, yeah, like like you said there, it was inflating your ego. There's there's a lot more that you can do 
outside of having muscles or looking well mm. to not bring up your ego, but to make you feel confident and make you happy inside yourself, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I know we've had this conversation before uh, with like other coaches and stuff like that. And I think, especially with the bodybuilding, it's how to, how to say this. People poke their nose in other people's businesses a lot on like, say the thing, like we had this conversation. Oh, I, yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah like, you know what I, mean? I think that's, I suppose, how would I explain it? We're both caught here. So like, I would class myself as being in the industry, but having one fit foot out. Mm. That's that's me. I think when I first started the, the whole online coaching, me being a coach in general, I, I just thought, you know, the fitness industry, because it's gone really image based, it's going to be full of jealousy, mm. bitterness. And I just from the start, I seen that and I just didn't want to get caught up in it. Like I, when I first was setting up, you, you had the likes of Goldstone. You had the likes of Ben Dunn's. There was clicks down there. You had five or six coaches in each gym that were friends commenting on each other's photos. You're doing great, pal. You're doing this, 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 and this. Same people, you know, talking bad about the same people they're friends, supposed to be friends with. Like, mm. So it was that side of it. I just kind of took a, a step back and said, I don't want to get caught up in that because it's a bad road to go down and it's only going to lead to me probably being hurt, upset, pissed off. And I said, I'm going to do this on my own, as in I'm not going to get caught up in other coaches or the industry itself. I'm just going to go out there and I'm going to help people. I'm just mm. going to genuinely help people. And I don't give a fuck what coach is doing what. I don't care about the industry itself. I'm just out here on my own trying to help people and make a difference. So it kind of worked, you know, it kind of worked. Yeah, no, and that's unreal. And like, I think it's it's good to have this conversation because even as you were saying it there, like that little trick, I, I was one of those people, you know what I mean? And you know, Yeah, <laughs> I was. Yeah, Chris, I heard what you said. <laughs> but look, it's good to be able, <clears throat> excuse me, it's good to be able to look back on these things. And, you know, as I said, I was delighted. I, I saw you out and I was able to just say, you know what? They're lessons, they're, they're lessons. Yeah, so, lessons, like, lessons along the way. If I bring um, it back, if I brought it back to the the whole commenting under people's photos, like I'm all about that. Mm. But don't co comment on a guy's photo and say he look or say he looks well, and then tell somebody else that he's cheating because he's taking loads of steroids or he's taking more than you are or you know he's just a dickhead in general. Like, yeah. be be real, like just be honest, like be a good person. You know that's yeah. what it's about. Yeah, no, absolutely. And yeah, it's just kind of, I suppose, keeping keeping the circle small. Like, I suppose I think I'm after kind of going down a similar route to you now. Where it's like the small circle, keep to myself, you know what I mean? Do it's my way own to do it. way to do it, man. And oh, my God, my head is just so much better. And like you were saying earlier on, people talking about like negativity and stuff like that. And it's like um, I'm feeling shit or whatever. I think more so the negativity comes, especially around Waterford, of dragging other people down. Um, you know what I mean? Is people a lot of people don't feel good unless they are dragging other people through the mud, like. Yeah. Um, and but you know, it's um, I think you know, unless you're gonna say something good or something that's gonna help somebody, try not to say too much at all. Do you know mm -hmm. that kind of way? I'm big into that, and my friends are, are the same. Some of my friends would even some sometimes be a little bit negative, get caught up in stuff, and I'd have to say to them like, "Listen, man, you need to pull back." Yeah. You know, think of all the good stuff. You're you're gone down that road. Then they switch. You're like, you know what, Ian? You're right. I've been fucking negative last week. Yeah, a hundred percent. Let's do it. And um, we like, you know, we, we get on the buzz again. Like, it's it's yeah. re it makes a difference. It does. If you can only be on that little mission, like you're gonna you're, you're gonna move forward. Put it that way. Mm. You, you're you're destined. Like you're guaranteed to move forward. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said earlier on, like the four the four or five people around you, like if they're all moving forward, you've no choice but to move forward with them. Like you know. Yeah. Um, or you get left behind. It's a, it, do you know what, Dave? It's a tool, man. Like pe people, like would know me as uh, maybe antisocial, and I might come across as that. Like I, I don't really like people, but that's really not it. Like you know, I suppose I love people. That's that's my job. You know, mm. when I have a new guy coming into me in the gym. I'm like, yes, I'm forward to meeting this fella. He sounds like a bit of a character, such and such. But it's different. It's who you really trust and who is. is who you're spending the majority of your time with. 
that's completely different. That's the thing that can have the impact. Do you know what I'm saying to you? Absolutely. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. It makes an impact on everything. Yeah, it will just make life better, honestly. Yeah. To come away from that, we spoke a little yeah, bit before, course. just about um, mental health and all stuff. I know you have yeah. suffered in the past. Talk me through that a little bit. Um, what, what was it like going through that or what time was it around? Mental health. So I suppose I, I would have started suffering bad with mental health when I was 17. To be honest with you, it probably stemmed from like some tri- childhood trauma mm. that we'll talk about an- another day. Yeah. And then after that, it was actually my skin, Dave. So it, it was similar to you, man. I okay. broke out with bad skin in, in secondary school. I had really bad acne and I got kind of bullied. There, there was names that used to be always thrown at me. I used to go into the toilet and there used to be fucking things like crater face and pizza face with my name like carved onto the toilet and stuff. So that actually played a, a big part on my brain and how I thought. And something so silly, it's mad, right? Because you look back at it, it's so silly. And I was obviously weak-minded at the time, but it had this crazy effect on me. Mm. So the, the whole mental health thing, it, it, was, it was like really low self-esteem, no confidence. If I was in a room, I was sweating. I felt like everybody was looking at me and then what they seen was just this ugly loser. Like I was just, I, I was literally in my head so much and I couldn't get out of it. Mm-hmm. And I was actually like that in the, at the start of like my, um, my uh, when I first went to bodybuilding. I remember being out one night, right? And I was like, I was big, I was standing in the corner. <laughs> there, I was out again, right? But I, I, I was standing <laughs> in the corner, what the fuck? I was standing in the corner and I was just like, I was big but and I was standing there, but like I wasn't dancing, I wasn't socializing. And it looked like I was just being that buff guy trying to stand still and look tough. <laughs> yeah. But in my head, I was like, I'm a state and I couldn't move. And it looked like, I know people were saying, oh, look, he thinks he's great because he's big and he, think, he thinks he's lovely. Probably, I, I probably was wearing nice clothes. I always dress well. But in my head, I was just this loser. I was ugly. I was like, it was obviously, um, how could I explain it? It's true self-esteem, it's true low confidence. I felt like there was a mirror following me around every day. And then every day I looked into the mirror, I didn't like what, what, what I seen. It, it was it was fucking crazy. It was crazy. Man, that analogy is so I good. know. And that's, that's how like that's how bad I was, man. That's how bad I was. Like I, and then, then people say, like, why did you go down a bad road? Like it, it escalated with that. And then when, once you're down there, like, once you're taking drink and drugs, again, like I said earlier, it, it's a temporary release. Mm. So I was confident when I drank. When I, like, when I had a few drinks, you know, I was the life of the party. I was full of jokes. I lightened up a bit. When I took drugs, same thing. But you can't take drugs 24-7. You can't take drugs every hour of every day. Mm. So I suppose that is in itself why now I, I, I do other things to, to get confidence and to feel fulfilled and improve my mental health course you know yeah look to be honest i started doing uh i started up the business went from bodybuilding getting people in shape lately I, i'm maybe last year or two i'm really gone down the mental health side of things yeah same as myself so, yeah yeah like someone same. comes into me and they're like listen i want to get a six pack but i'm on antidepressants i'm like okay whoa 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 well a six pack isn't the way out of it yeah let's look at everything else in your life and let's see can we make that a bit better you know yeah, no, I, I, and do you know what? I'm the exact same as myself. Like, um, like at the moment, I say to people when they're coming in, like, I don't care if we don't get any 12 week physical transformation. Like, where the mind goes, the body will follow. Fix up here first, then exactly. everything else will fall into place. And um, antidepressants, what's your opinion on them now? Um, so this, this is all a touchy subject, right? Mm. I'm just going to put it out there for any viewers that are watching it because. I, I came out with something a while ago online and I actually got attacked a bit for, for it. So what I said was mental health at the best of times is a choice. Mm-hmm. And I got attacked, right? Because people are like, what the fuck? My brother killed himself. Uh, my friend died. How, how dare you? If, if you if you look at it, I said at the best of times, not all the times. Yeah. So antidepressants, I don't agree with them. I think they're a load of bollocks, right? But I'm going to go ahead and cover myself first. There's people out there small percentage that probably need them yeah but what i'm getting at with the antidepressants right i was on antidepressants i was on three or four different medications at a time i didn't need them but a doctor told me i needed them 
right? He said, this is the way out. Why didn't he say drink more water? Why didn't he say go for a walk? Why didn't he say exercise? Mm. Do you know what I'm saying to you? Yeah. I have people that come into my office on a, a regular basis, un- unfortunately, and they sit down and they're like, listen, I have anxiety. I suffer with depression. I'm on this pill, that pill, that pill. And I'm like, right. So obviously, like, someone says that to you, they pull you in straight away. And you're like, okay, tell me a bit about your life. Like, what way do you live? And you're sitting there on the couch. You're looking at this person. And they're five minutes into the conversation. They drink regularly. They don't eat right. They take drugs on the weekend. And I'm like, I hate to break it to you, Larry, but you're not depressed. You're just living like shit. You know, anyone that lived the way you're living is literally going to be depressed. So they're the guys that I would say, no, you don't need antidepressants. You know, you're not suffering with depression. You don't suffer with anxiety. It's you're treating your body like absolute shit. It's like your body or you're not your body, your brain. Your brain is a car. Don't change the oil. It blows up. Do you know what I'm saying to you? Like, yeah, absolutely. And like all this kind of, I actually said this on, on one of the previous podcasts, like very similar. Like, I agree. Happiness is a choice. Um, now, I... I do, I do agree with it. Um, like things like you just said, I think a lot of people can kind of think they're falling into, like they're just going through a bad time or whatever. But they're just putting, they're they're not addressing something in their life that needs to be addressed. As you used an example there, someone who's sitting down, like just watching telly, drinking. You know what I mean? They're unfulfilled. You know what yeah. I mean? Which, which is is what's kind of probably co- like causing it that they just haven't realized themselves. Um, no, unfulfilled, <clears throat> unfulfilled. Eh? There's a word, man. Um, just going to throw, throw it in there while, while we have the subject. I would say that bodybuilding helped me build confidence through physical appearance, but everybody thinks I'm happier since I got into fitness. I actually am happier since I started setting goals and being fulfilled. I think the, r- the real cure for mental health is going out there and chasing your passion, like going after something you love, having purpose. I think if you've no purpose in life and you're just, you know, you're going to work, you're going home, you're doing the shopping, you're sitting down with the wife, that's not purpose. You need to dream, you need to set big goals. And like you said, fulfilled. If you can be fulfilled, I can guarantee you, you you won't have poor mental health. Your, your, Your life will change. Absolutely. So sorry for cutting across you, but it's just that that word fulfilled. That's the word you need to focus on. Yeah, and I I, I actually couldn't agree more. Um, yeah, I don't I don't even know what to add to that man. That was just so well put. But yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I was just go, going on to say there, like my opinion on antidepressants would be a little bit different. Okay, um, go for it. I, as you said, I understand that there is some people who, um. There's some people who have a chemical imbalance, you know, those kind exactly, of Exactly, exactly. They, they need to be on antidepressants, like, all year round. Um, yeah. So for some people, they're just going through a shit, shit time. Um, now, with antidepressants, like, I find the highs are not as high, but the lows aren't as low as well. So I have always looked at antidepressants as a good tool for myself, you know what I mean? Not saying what other people, but for myself as kind of, like, a crutch to get out of a hard time. Um, if I'm going through something that's really bad and like my mental health goes and everything else around me is kind of falling to pieces, I will take them for two, three months, as I said, as kind of like a crutch. Once, now again, this comes down to, I suppose, self-awareness, being able to identify these hard times and when you're feeling okay again to come off them. So I think the big thing with antidepressants is people go on them and then they just never come off them. They never come um, off them, yeah. Yeah, and become reliant on it. And that's kind of where I draw the line with it. Like, I, I don't agree with that. Um, you, but, you know what, Dave? You, you need to develop your own coping skills. Mm, oh, 100%. Like, a guy said to me one day, and it actually stood with me. Um, I say it was an old client, and he was slipping here and there. He was binging on food. And I would kind of probably been a little bit hard on him or maybe not being as understanding as I could. And what he said to me was, you know, when you get pissed off, you go for a run. When I get pissed off, I eat. Mm. And do you know what? That's it. Like, But then I said to him, obviously, well, there you go. You need to find something else to go to. And I suppose that's why exercise is such a good thing. 
Mm. But it, it, it's, yeah, if, if you're struggling, if you're a person that does struggle with stuff like that, you have to develop coping skills and you have to turn to something else, whether it be reading, you know, going for a walk, going for a workout, you know, you know yeah. what I say. And I, I suppose kind of where my my side of the point comes into it again, say with that person who, you know, isn't familiar with the gym and say they want to start exercising to, you know, make themselves feel better, but they're not used to going into a gym. And then all of a sudden it's this new anxiety. It's a lot of yeah. stress, you know, you're feeling down and you don't want to do things as it is. So going in and adding to all that is, you know what I mean? It's not going to make you feel good. So in a situation like that, that's where I could say, I, in my my opinion, I think it would be not the worst thing to use that for, say, a month, two months, three months when when you're trying to find these new coping mechanisms. But it's when people take them, don't look for something else, and then just like never come out of the hole they're in. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Yeah. yeah no. Do you know what? I wouldn't have looked at it like that, but I, I'm going to go ahead and kind of agree with you. Okay. Yeah. And. Yeah, again, it's just through my own personal experience, which are everyone has their own kind of backstory and opinion on it. Of course, they do. Of course, they do. Um, so we talked a little bit about like friendships, relationships, stuff like that. What are some lessons that you have learned from, say, bad relationships, whether they be friends or ex girlfriends or or what? Dave, I could be fucking killed here, man. You need to be careful. <laughs> fair, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Fires are slashed on the car. <laughs> okay. Nah, I'm only messing. Um, I suppose, do you know what? I've never been in really a toxic relationship with a girl or even a toxic friendship with a mate. I would say if I had to... Uh, the one lesson I learned from being in the wrong relationships is if you don't have somebody that's going to support you, you have nothing at all. Mm. You know, if you have somebody that's going to be saying, why are you doing that? or even putting you down and saying, that's not going to work. You're pretty much fucked because the way I look at it, 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 I suppose any relationships, whether it be your girlfriend or your mate, they're the people you're going to spend the majority of your time with for the rest of your life. So if they don't believe in you and they don't fill you up with the right info, they're not saying the right words to you on a daily basis, that's going to affect you. So I learned a good lesson. And to be honest with you, I, I've been through relationships where it's constant nagging. They're not happy, not with me, but just with the things I'd be doing. It, like if I was setting a goal or if I had an idea, it's like not going to work and yeah. you can't do it. It's too time consuming. I came to a decision where I just cut those people out of my life now. Mm. You know, I suppose I probably am a little bit hard, but you have to put yourself first. Like at the end of the day, right, I'm all about being good to my friends, my family. Like, like ask any of them that, they'll tell you that. Mm. But I'm also good at, or I'm also a big believer that there's a point in your life where you need to go fuck everyone. And that includes the girlfriend and that includes your best mates. I don't mean like do, do them harm, but you need to put them aside and you need to put yourself first. Yeah. Too many people are worried these days about, I suppose, what other people think. You need to go for, you need to go for stuff, do you get me? You need to put yourself first. That's where shit happens. So yeah, look, I, I suppose I cut those people out and Ever since I developed that mentality, like if you're in my cycle or circle, cycle, <laughs> if you're in my circle or or you're 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 in a relationship with me, if you're not lifting me up, out you go, because life's too short for me to be held down here. Like I want to go up the way, I want to excel, and you know what? I want to bring you all with me. That's the difference. Mm, yeah. Why are you bringing me down when I'm trying to make it up? Or I'm trying to make it up the ladder, but I'm also grabbing you with me and I'm tearing you along. If I'm doing this for you, why are you bringing me down? So, look, it's an easy, easy decision. And it's easy for me nowadays. Do you know, again, I would have probably been like, ah, I care too much about what he thinks, they think, I'm not going to do it. But now it's like, okay, if you're bringing me down, I will touch you like that. Yeah. And it, that's a valuable skill. It's a very valuable skill. Yeah. Interestingly enough, like when I was just kind of thinking what my answer to that question would be, and you pretty much covered it. Like, I think that like with relationships and stuff like that, to e for it to work, both of you need to be working on yourselves. And then, you know, your relationship falls. It's just a byproduct of that. You know what I mean? Exactly. Where When people are relying on happiness from other people, and then two people each like that find each other and you're just relying on each other and you know what I mean? There's you're no unstoppable then, Sharif. You're unstoppable yeah. then, man. Do you know yeah. what I mean? 
Yeah. It, it, um, it, look, it's a, it's a big thing. It is it is a big thing. Even like with clients that I would be saying, like they're at home trying to change their, their lifestyle and improve and, and their partner isn't really going with it. And they're, you know, cribbing, oh, what the fuck? You won't get a takeaway. Like, that's stupid. I'm not living like this. Mm. that's hard as well for them and that's only look a bit of food imagine doing that in every other aspect in the life you know like you really need the other person to be on par with where you're going yeah and yeah look if, if it takes a couple of relationships lost friendships to find that i can tell you it will be worth it in the end absolutely it's all just lessons along the way isn't it lessons yeah. along the way man that's what relationships are it's just kind of like okay i don't want that again you know what yeah. i mean so, that's it yeah um, so just onto your own style of coaching then, like you were saying there about like, uh, take what, like, or eating off plan and stuff like that. What would your approach be with, like with your clients? Do you incorporate much balance in with your clients or? Yeah. Like, look, I suppose my approach has, has always been the same. Nail the fucking basics. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very, very like, like basics, basic, basics. Like I'd have people coming to me and saying, Hey, listen, I looked up this supplement the other day and the supplement said that uh, it works well for fat loss. And then my reply is like, listen, you can't even go to the gym three days a week consistently. The least of your worries are these supplements. So I'm very like, you know, get out for a walk, you know, a few steps, do three workouts, you know, get some sleep, water. That's my approach. With food, I would have, I tell you actually, the first diet I ever done out was chicken rice and broccoli by six. <laughs> and, and you know what yeah your, your man your man that i had on the diet he, he got shredded right mm. obviously <laughs> <laughs> right? he got shredded and he rang me one night and he was crying now literally crying saying like I, i'm losing the rag can i please eat something off plan right so that's me having no education right that's mm. me like not knowing what i was doing i, I was probably about 17 18 I probably got a, a plan for a bodybuilding and then said, right, I'm going to give that to someone else. You know, that kind of thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, nowadays, obviously, look, there, there's more information and stuff. I think it's reduce, not eliminate. And that's the key for anyone. Hmm. It's obviously different with everyone. But like, let's say you have 20% of people that are probably in great nick. They want to do a photo shoot. They want to go on stage. That's different. The other 80% of people are just trying to be healthy. You know, they want a happier life. Like we said earlier, good relationship with their family, sleep well, good moods. For them, my approach is reduce and not eliminate. So, like, I, I would say if you want to go and have a fucking off-plan meal, have an off-plan meal. Mm -hmm. If you want to have three off-plan meals, you're fucked, you know? Yeah. There, I think there's an element of common sense in it as well. Like, I was explaining to a guy yesterday. He was asking me, like, would it be okay to have a dairy milk as a snack? And I straight away said, look, if it fits your calories, it's okay. Hmm. Use a bit of common sense. A dairy milk is fine. Opening up a dairy milk, then going on to a box of Pringles, and then ringing up fucking Domino's, that's not okay. Do you get me? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the, the, way I, the way I say it to my, to my clients is look at it as a reward system. You know what I mean? Have the off-plan meal. Yeah, absolutely. But make sure the last week or two weeks has been exactly. off, off like, you know what I mean? Exactly. Um, and yeah, perfect. I think a lot of people's problems then is, you know, they, they're they're probably not getting the sitting not my clients now. Um, I mean just the, the general population. Yeah. They're they're not doing the work, they're not doing the steps, their calories around the shit food are off. So everything again, it doesn't fit. Like you were mm -hmm. saying, you, you earn it. So they might say I'm only having two takeaways a week or one takeaway a week and, and I'm not losing. But everything else around it hasn't been adjusted, you know, or hasn't been looked at. Like it's yeah. like, yeah, you had one takeaway a week, but your steps are probably five thousand. You know, you've been out the last four weekends, so I think it, 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 it's it's getting that balance. There's definitely a way, like there's definitely a way of eating bad food in moderation and getting great results. Mm. But it's achieving the right balance, sure. That's the key, isn't it? Like, yeah. Just out of curiosity, yeah, what way do you do your food? Do you track calories or is it intuitive eating? Or I basically know calories by looking at them at yeah. this stage. Yeah. But no, no, no. So if I if I'm in a maintenance phase, Dave, I will just look at food. Mm. So I won't weigh out and stuff like that. And then if I'm in like a, a getting lean phase, a cutting phase, I go back to a bit of tracking. So to be honest, without tracking you cannot accurately get in shape or gain muscle. And I yeah. always say that. Like, I would pull clients every three or four weeks and say, 
have you slacked off a bit? Are you still tracking every day? And they're like, mm, not as much. And I'm like, well, this is probably why you're slowing down. Because yeah. although you think you know by eye what's on that plate, you don't. Because I'm doing this now so many years and I still don't. Yeah, It's the accuracy of it, you know. So, yeah, um, at the moment, I am. I'm tracking. I'm tracking. I, I, ha- I actually have two off-plan meals a week. So when I say off-plan, I mean two takeaways. Mm. Um, Brilliant. Yeah, that, that's me. Now, look, to be honest, I still stay in a deficit doing that because my activity level is so high. I know I can fit it in. And yeah. I suppose at the end of the day, it, it's about what you can get away with, you know. Mm. If, you can, if you can have it, have it. It's funny. It's actually, like, I was curious because, like, I feel like I'm just kind of like a couple of years behind you, like training wise, and at the moment, and and like, age, um, Dave, and age. And, yeah. But um, you hit thirty, boy. Wait until you hit thirty. Oh, different ball oh, then. <laughs> um, I'm literally the exact same, man. The exact same, like kind of from bodybuilding, you can just eyeball it, um, as to the best I can. If I want to strengthen it up, I'll go to track and, and two off plan meals a week, um, and like getting leaner, getting stronger, getting like you know what I mean. It. It does work. It does, and, and it's balance. Works. And it's balance. It's balance. Yeah. You know, you, know I mean? you enjoy your life and you're getting in shape. Yeah, exactly. So but you know what? I say one one thing is what I'd like to come up come out with is people's idea of balance is very much, you know, all over the place. Mm. And I think for, for for me as a coach and for you as a coach, our job is really actually showing them what actual balance is. Yeah. Like Put it this way, with wine, I would have clients coming into me for a consultation and I would say, okay, question, do you drink? No, not really. Two glasses of wine with dinner. And I'm like, whoa, so is that two glasses like on the weekend or a day? They were like, oh, that'd be every day. So I'm like, so you're telling me you have 14 glasses of wine a week. They full on believe that that's balance. Yeah. And look, fair enough if they do, but it's it's adjusting that. Like that, That's what's going to help people, do you get me? Showing mm. them what true balance is. Yeah, it's a very good point. Very good point. Would you, would you find with your clients to be similar enough? Like they, they come in, they say, Well, like, you know, I'm not doing that and too wrong, but I just can't seem to lose weight. That's that's yeah. the kind of that's the phrase you hear all the time. Yeah, and to be fair, like I don't think it's anything to do with the client, it's just lack of education, which is lack why it's common in the pay in the first place. So exactly. um, but yeah, no, I think it's very common across the board with that. It is, um, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, you, you start breaking it down and there you're like, Oh, okay, it makes sense now. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Ian, that was absolutely unreal. I'm going to wrap things up here. Thank you so much for coming on for the chat. Really enjoyed that, bud. Thanks, boy. And I really enjoyed it as well. It was unreal. Fair play to you. You, Do you want to plug your social media accounts just before we go, where people can find you, any of the businesses you have? or? Um, Yeah, so the Instagram page is Icon Coaching. Do I have anything? Oh, um, no, that's it. You know what? I'll leave it at that. I won't mention anything else. Icon Coaching, that's all. Brilliant, Dean. Thank you so much. Cheers. See you, Dave.